This new underwater battery will be able to store electricity at a depth of up to 600 meters. Two German physicists have developed this storage method, which makes use of the principle of pumped storage. The idea is to store surplus electricity from wind and solar parks underwater. How exactly this new battery works, what depth has to do with capacity and where the underwater pumped storage system can be used, this is what we will talk about today. And with that, welcome to the German Science Guy. My name is Dr. Jakob Poton and in Germany we say Los geht's. In 2023, almost 10,500 gigawatt hours of green electricity were curtailed, or in other words, not used, according to the Federal Network Agency of Germany. That is simply around 4% of total green electricity consumption in Germany that could not be used because there's no way to store it. And Germany is not the only country with that problem. But there's a solution. A well-known and proven principle is pumped storage. And it is precisely this principle that two physicists from Kassel, a beautiful city in Germany, Germany have made use of. At the bottom of the sea, they want to develop a potential place to store renewable energy. So let's take a look at how the pumped storage works. Pumped storage is usually used on lakes or rivers. It acts as an energy storage facility and uses hydropower to provide electrical energy when required. The systems are typically equipped with two water basins at different heights. When there's additional electricity, water is pumped into the higher basin, storing potential energy. When demand for electricity is high, the water flows back into the lower basin, drives the turbines, and with that, generates electricity. This principle makes it possible to balance supply and demand in the electricity grid. As you can see, the principle is actually very simple, and that is also part of the secret of its success. But now there's a problem. Pump storage power plants require specific geographical conditions and they need a lot of space for the two water basins. In Germany, many potential sites have already been used and the dense population limits the possibilities for new plants. And it's the same in many other countries. So the two scientists now want to outsource the pump storage, so to speak, to the bottom of the sea. The concept is based on a hollow concrete sphere that is anchored to the seabed. The aim is to transfer the proven principle of pumped storage power plants to the underwater world. The whole thing works like this. If there is surplus of electricity, for example from wind or solar power systems, the electricity is used to pump water out of the hollow concrete sphere. This is achieved by an electrically driven pump turbine that pumps the water out against the ambient pressure. This charges the storage tank, so to speak. So if the demand for electricity is higher, a valve on the hollow sphere is opened and now water flows back into the cavity. Due to the water pressure, which increases with depth, the inflowing water drives a turbine, which then generates electricity via a generator. This is where the energy store is discharged. An underwater cable creates the connection to the power grid on land or to a floating transformer station, for example, from an offshore wind farm. So it's actually another simple principle. Instead of using two basins, one spear is pumped empty or flooded. The size and depth below the water level of the sphere significantly determines the capacity and performance of the system. So the research project surrounding this invention is called STEN-C, or Stored Energy in the Sea. The Fraunhofer Institute for Energy Economics and Energy System Technology is working together with the US startup Spera. Spera specializes in 3D concrete printing for applications in the field of renewable energies and prints the concrete spheres. According to Spera, the 3D printing process is designed to eliminate the need for molds and form work, which saves cost of the steel support structure. The second partner is Ploiger Industries. The company is one of the world's leading manufacturers of submersible motor pumps, which is a key component of the spherical storage system. The first field test took place back in 2016 in Constance on Lake Constance, also a very beautiful place in Germany. Lake Constance was ideal because the team was able to test their theoretical models there under real but controlled conditions. The test sphere had a diameter of 3 meters and was tested in 100 meters of water. During the four-week test, the team checked how the system worked and collected a lot of data. And the results were quite positive. It was possible to recover 90% of the electricity used to pump the sphere empty. So we have a pretty good efficiency, although we will come back to this later. Following the successful field test in Lake Constance, the researchers now want to test the sphere in the sea. 
The next big step is a test run of the Californian coast in which a hollow 400 ton concrete sphere with a diameter of 9 meters is to be anchored at a depth of 500 to 600 meters. The prototype shall have an output of 0.5 megawatts and a capacity of 0.4 megawatt hours. So just you can imagine the electricity consumption in my country for a one person household is around 2.1 megawatt hours per year. So one sphere can cover the needs of one person for around 70 days. The purpose of the test is to see whether the technology could later be transferred to a larger scale. The next step is a 10 meter sphere and then another installation with a 30 meter concrete sphere. The larger sphere will then be used in even deeper layers of water and store even more energy. I've already briefly mentioned that the performance and capacity of the spherical storage tanks depends heavily on how large the spheres are and how much water pressure is exerted on them. Researchers at the Fraunhofer Institute have found that a water depth of 600 to 800 meters would be optimal. This provides a perfect mix of pressure, ball weight and wall thickness. At these depths, normal underwater motor pumps can still be used and no expensive special concrete is required. According to initial calculations, around 20 megawatt hours of electricity could be generated at a depth of 700 meters. It was not stated exactly how many spheres or what diameter this figure was calculated with, but since according to the Fraunhofer Institute, spheres with a diameter of 30 meters are to be tested at this depth, I assume that this size was used for the calculations. According to this, a sphere with a diameter of 30 meters could absorb as much energy for 4 hours as an off wind turbine produces at maximum power. The advantages of this technology are really impressive. Large amounts of electricity could also be stored directly next to offshore wind farms. The Fraunhofer IEE has carried out a site analysis of possible locations and their potential with the help of so-called geoinformation systems. The analysis has shown that areas such as Norway, Portugal, the US coast, Brazil and Japan are particularly promising. They estimate that there is a global storage potential of around 817,000 gigawatt hours. That's a huge figure. At the 10 best European locations, 166,000 gigawatt hours could be achieved. By way of comparison, all current German pumped storage power plants on the mainland only manage just under 40 gigawatt hours. And the technology not only works in the sea, but also in deep lakes, whether natural or artificial. All deep pits that can be filled with water are potential locations for underwater storage. Huge pits that remain after open cast mining are particularly interesting. The researchers calculated that a pumped storage power plant could be built at the deepest point of this mine, which would be able to store more electricity than the coal fired power plant that are close to the mines. As you can see, this technology is quite versatile and can be used economically in many places around the world. Despite the promising forecasts, there are also challenges here too. And that brings us to the big hurdle of the video. Before that, subscribe to the channel and activate the bell so that you don't miss any more videos. So the big hurdle or the big but, as we say in Germany, the große Aber. So as the researchers have already said, the pump has to be installed at a certain depth for it to be economical. The optimum depth would be 600 to 800 meters. This is because the deeper the pump, the higher the water pressure and the greater the storage capacity. Of course, this depth brings with it a few challenges. The material is a main limiting factor. Beyond the 800 meter mark, neither conventional turbines or normal concrete can withstand the high pressure. It is therefore not possible to go any deeper with the current state of research and of course you first have to find a suitable location for precisely this depth. In addition, installation and maintenance at such depths are very complex and cost intensive. The service life of the concrete sphere is around 50 to 60 years. The pump turbine and generator would have to be replaced after every 20 years. That is already a long time. However, if the project is implemented on a large scale, it would definitely be quite difficult to maintain. In addition, there have already been complications with getting the balls back up during a test run. Here I would also like to mention the material, so the concrete, that is used for the balls. Cement production is one of the most emission intensive industrial processes of all. Sparrow, the production company for the spheres, says on its website that it causes 50% less CO2 emissions through 3D printing. But on the Fraunhofer website, they still talk about a collaboration with traditional concrete construction. And according to estimates by the 
Fraunhofer Institute, the efficiency of a storage cycle of 75 to 80 percent is slightly lower than the percentage stated in the first test, which was 90 percent. But it is within the range of classical pump storage power plants, which have an efficiency of 70 to 85 percent, so this is already very good. Incidentally, this calculation is based on a storage park with 6 spheres, a total output of 30 megawatts and a capacity of 120 megawatt hours, as well as 520 storage cycles per year. The efficiency itself is not much worse, but when it comes to the total output, there is a noticeable difference compared to classical pump storage power plants. Of course, this is just an extrapolation, but if you compare it to the most powerful pump storage power plant in Germany, you can see that there is still room for improvement. It simply has a total output of 1060 megawatt. And to be honest, I have to say that the question naturally arises as to how long the electricity can actually be stored. It will be extremely difficult to get such a container so tight that it can hold the pressure without losses. And the paper on the field test in Lake Constant does not explain exactly how the sphere is kept tight in order to avoid pressure losses. The focus so far has been more on the technical and logistical challenges involved in developing and testing the system, such as which pump technology is used and how the prototype is installed and handled. So that should also be kept in mind and was something I asked myself at first. Of course, projects like this in the sea always raise the question of ecological risk. Fortunately, this was already considered during the first test on Lake Constant. The research group took care to have as little impact on the environment as possible. Together with experts from the Institute for Lake Research at Lake Constant, it was decided that the materials used such as steel and concrete posed hardly any ecological risk. The researchers used a pump turbine that is also suitable for drinking water and to prevent animals from being sucked in, a low flow velocity and a fine grid were used. The team also used these precautions in a test in the sea only on a larger scale. All in all, I find the principle really exciting and the initial tests and projections have also shown that the potential is definitely there. 2026 is not too far away, so I will definitely be keeping an eye on developments. But do you think there is acceptance for such storage systems in the sea? Feel free to write your opinion on the whole thing in the comments. Actually, I already did this video in German and many people were critical about this point. And also, here you find a video that is really interesting about something from Microsoft. They developed a new quantum chip and they say that it's a breakthrough and many other media say. I'm a little bit critical about it. Watch this video, it's a really great story and actually it's also really important. So, see you soon, goodbye, you're Jacob.